For Canny ControlNet in Flux, forget all the workflows you have seen so far. I've prepared a workflow for you with exceptional quality, incredible speed, and unmatched performance. For those of you who don't know what Canny is, the Canny is when you have an image and you want to create other images from it. Canny identifies the edges of this image and if you pay attention, it creates a map like this from it. And any prompt you give it, it creates based on this map. This is useful for when you like the pose and conditions of an image. We don't care about the lighting or color in this case because Canny doesn't deal with lighting and color. It focuses on the linear structure of the image, such as the pose of the subject and the overall object, and not just humans or animals. For instance, if you like the shape of an object, you can create a canny model of it and then use it to generate other forms. You can turn a real photo into a painting or you can change the setting of the scene. This is workflow version 1, a basic and simple workflow where you can upload the canny model and dual clips and set 20 steps and generate a canny map from your input image to achieve an output with reasonably good quality. However, because this workflow is basic, it runs slower and doesn't offer much control over quality settings. You can't, for example, increase the speed by lowering quality or improve quality by sacrificing speed. Essentially, there is no handle to make such adjustments. In workflow version 2, which I've designed, you not only get faster performance, but also the ability to adjust quality settings. This handle lets you increase or decrease the final quality. Even with the default 1024 resolution, you can achieve excellent quality. For instance, this image here was generated at 1024 resolution. One major advantage of workflow version 2 over the basic one is that you can decide what percentage of the canny model is involved in the process. In workflow version 1, the canny model handles all steps from start to finish, applying the canny map throughout the entire process. While this works, it limits Flux creativity because the canny model controls the entire workflow. In workflow version 2, however, you can use a node to set the percentage of involvement for the canny model, for example, 30 or 20%, and after that, Flux takes the control of generating the image. This increases Flux's creativity, making the workflow more flexible and resulting in more attractive, dynamic outputs. It opens up creative possibilities for you to experiment and achieve more artistic results. Additionally, this workflow includes a resolution option. This is very important, guys. The higher you set this, the better the quality of your image. Eliminating the need for upscaling, you can produce high quality images directly, often better than those achieved through upscaling. Here, you can also set the steps, adjust the CFG, and take advantage of LoRa integration. I've added the Flux Turbo LoRa, which boosts speed even further. You can also use any other LoRa you have, including personal ones or style LoRa's. This makes it possible to add your own face or custom elements to the image seamlessly. Now let's move on the detailed tutorial for workflow version 2. The download links for both workflows are in the description. Workflow version 1, the basic version is completely free and based on Black Forest's original work. Workflow version 2 is exclusively for my Patreon supporters and you can easily download it from there. Let's review the workflow together. I've provided all download links in the description for all models, including Flux Canny model, Dual Clips, the Ada Seb LoRa for Flux, and the VAE and other models that I'm about to tell you. First here, you upload your image in this section. Then you generate the Canny map of your image with some adjustments before moving on to the next step. Extracting the canny map is essential at this stage. You need to adjust these numbers and you'll get a feel for what they do. The lower you set these values, the more lines appear. In some images, we need high precision, while in others, we don't want to focus too much on the lines. Lowering these two values captures more lines from the image and significantly increases precision. 
For example, if I reduce this value, right click here and run it, you will see the number of lines increases. If I lower it even more, right click and then run it again, you'll notice even more lines. The lower these two values, the more lines are captured from the image, resulting in much higher accuracy. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not. In certain cases, I don't want too many fine details, especially on the face. For such situations, general details are enough for me. So I adjust these two numbers to a larger value. Keep in mind that the upper number cannot be larger than the lower one. You can right click and use this option to preview your map before running the workflow. Once I'm satisfied, I leave it as is. The resolution indicates the final quality of your image. By default, I set it to 1024, but if you want a higher quality output, meaning the final image has better resolution, you can increase this value, but you will need longer time to generate your image. Alternatively, if you want faster output and quality is secondary, you can even reduce it further. I keep it at 1024. After setting this up, you move on this section. This is the flux guidance, which is set to 30 by default for the Canny model. I recommend not changing this value, but you can experiment with it if you'd like. The CFG is usually set to 1. The higher you set it, the more it takes your prompt into account, and it slightly increases the saturation of your image. You can adjust between 1 and 8. Start with 1. And if you find the result isn't what you're looking for, you can increase the CFG value. These are the number of steps. Since we've activated Flux Turbo, we can get our output with just 8 steps. Friends, using this 8 step Flux Lura will significantly speed up your image generation. Here you can adjust the percentage influence of the Canny model on your final image. This node is one of the crucial nodes in this workflow. For example, if you set it to 20%, the Canny model will only contribute 20% to the image generation. And this 20% will be at the beginning of the generation. Because we want to increase the AI's creativity, we engage the Canny model only at the beginning. During the first 20%, it shapes the general structure of the final image. After that, Canny model is deactivated and Flux takes over applying its creative touch. I set it to 40%, meaning 40% of my map is influenced, and then Flux takes control. For the seed, set it to random or whatever you prefer. Moving on this section, which is the second part after Canny, you can use Flux FP8 here to reduce system load. And for this option, make sure it's set to the second option to avoid excessive strain. These are exactly the same settings you've seen earlier. You can also add additional LoRa's. Here I've added Flux Pro LoRa to make the image resemble the Flux Pro style. In this section, you enter your prompt. For example, I wrote a very realistic portrait of an African woman with bold lips captured with a Canon camera. After clicking Q prompt, it begins creating the image. You will see how impressively it transforms our input into the final image with unparalleled quality. Be sure to try it out and share your feedback. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos.